Hi there, my name is Josh Hadro, and I'm the Managing Director of the IIIF Consortium. Uh, and I'm really grateful for this opportunity to be able to give you a short project briefing. Uh, and I'll be talking about uh, the use of IIIF beyond uh, the standard deep zoomable uh, image presentation that most folks might be familiar with. So uh, in particular, I'll be covering two related components or two aspects of community work that's happening. One is focusing on the 3.0 version of the IIIF specifications just published in June. Uh, really focused on the uh, use of IIIF in, uh, in terms of uh, time-based media, so audio and moving image materials. And then I'll shift gears a little bit to talk about um, discovery work, so the idea of how um, people are able to work with these materials in an aggregated um, or with an aggregator and institution, uh, and some of the work happening in a group called Discovery for Humans, which is looking at the user experience of how people uh, encounter and interact with IIIF materials. But I think it's worth starting at the beginning. If you're here, you're probably familiar, at least in concept with what IIIF is, but just to be explicit, it's an acronym uh, and it stands for the International Image Interoperability Framework. Uh, and what that is, um, is a set of open standards for delivering high quality, interoperable and attributed digital objects, mostly images and audiovisual files, and doing that online in a way that's um, a, a good user experience for the end users. Uh, and of course, there's other benefits that accrue in using open standards like these, especially uh, with now a really um, growing body of institutions and cultural heritage centers um, making not just use of the IIIF standards to publish huge amounts of materials, but also increasingly working to add new software components into the ecosystem. So just uh, continually growing and vibrant um, community that surrounds the IIIF standards. And this is a quick view into some of the places that we know of that have implemented IIIF, though by no means all of the places that uh, are making use of it. And the dots in red are uh, just major implementations that we know about. Uh, and then the dots in blue are actually members of the IIIF consortium that um, help fund the work uh, of making this a sustainable project and, and building buy-in and putting on conferences and doing all the education work to, to make those open standards um, really thrive in, in uh, the global web community. So the first piece we'll talk about here is uh, the presentation API, the 3.0 version, which was just published in June of 2020. Um, you can see here listed uh, some of the major components that uh, came with the update to 3.0 of that presentation API. But the main one that I want to focus on and, and really kind of the feather in the cap of this new release is this idea that it adds a, uh, a duration um, dimension to what we call the canvas. So for a long time, since the beginning, we've had this idea of an X and Y canvas um, in which you can put images and uh, and other materials to present them to end users. And now with the addition of a time-based dimension, we can juxtapose images uh, as well as time-based media on the same canvas. And then uh, of course, in doing it with the same standards, you then accrue the same benefits of being able to do things like annotations uh, and other supplemental material, all uh, in using the same set of tools and the same basic principles that IIIF has been working on for a number of years. So I think, maybe the best way to demonstrate this is just to go through a couple of examples of how people are already making use of this. This first example comes from Europeana, which is uh, just doing a, a really stellar job of aggregating materials from all of its member states and institutions. Uh, and in this case, using a custom developed uh, media player um, that is a IIIF media player uh, to present all of the, the elements that they have aggregated to that platform. And so this example just shows basic playback, but they've actually built in some really interesting tools for annotation into the Europeana media player, um, which then unlock things like captioning and other scholarly annotations that might be added as a layer uh, and an interaction layer on top of the image. But just to give you a sense of the basic interaction, here's, here's kind of the most, um, most simple case from Europeana.
And this next example takes this idea uh, one step further and shows a little bit of what's possible. So uh, this is an example that comes from the McGill, um, from McGill University uh, and demonstrates the ability to juxtapose um, uh, streaming video assets. In this case, the video is coming from YouTube. Being able to juxtapose that streaming video component with annotated um, musical notation over there on the right. And one other interesting thing about this is that uh, it's using music XML and you can actually navigate through the video, uh, through the different timestamps in the video by clicking on the musical notations there or using that navigation mechanism up there at the top. So I'll play this and you'll be able to hear and see how AAAF uh, 3.0 is able to bring all these components together. So this next example goes even one step further. And this is a tool called the Timeliner um, developed by Indiana University in conjunction with a digital agency called the Digirati. Uh, and this is really geared toward um, a classroom context where um, an instructor might use a piece of audio um, and then uses this tool and can use this tool to, for example, describe things like motifs and other recurring elements um, and other sections, uh, breaking up the sections of a piece of music and then being able to tie that to a visual indicator. So this interface is using a AAAF media components and then using that visual indicator to help uh, to help guide students and other um, learners in education contexts um, to see how those different pieces are recurring and, and be able to manipulate and add annotations of their own if they like. So uh, I'll play this example and you can get a sense of that. And uh, there's other great work um, that's happening out there um, in terms of uh, putting even more audio material out in the world and then building additional tools to, to work with those materials. So uh, lots of institutions like the British Library and others are, uh, are working on adding uh, many, many thousands of audio and moving image materials um, in AAAF. Um, uh, specification formats out there. Uh, and then this example I wanted to cite as just uh, one of many um, current efforts happening. So uh, a big Mellon grant for $450,000 um, going to Tanya Clement and um, her crew at UT Austin, uh, working with folks like Aviary and AVP um, and the Library of Congress and others um, to work on workflow tools and other um, components that allow for um, scholarly and critical annotation of audio materials, in particular things like oral histories, being able to um, tie other commentary components to particular points and um, elements within oral history uh, recordings. And the last thing I'll mention on this front uh, is this notion of the AAAF cookbook. So uh, this is really designed to be a set of best practices so that people don't have to reinvent the wheel. And so we've um, been building this up incrementally over the past number of months. And the idea is that um, from the simplest use case of presenting just a single image all the way to more complex modeling, like um, uh, complex uh, opera, um, sequences uh, in audio and moving image presentations or, or other complicated uh, 
mechanisms. Um, those can be modeled and so that uh, people don't have to uh, reinvent or uh, struggle with the basics. They can kind of take what we've given them in these cookbook recipes and then build on that and spend their time um, doing more innovative and more um, useful uh, things with um, new and interesting presentation of uh, AAAF components. So switching gears just a bit for the last few minutes here, um, I wanna describe the work that's happening on the discovery front. So this is kind of the, the next frontier for AAAF. Um, there's now a huge ecosystem, as I mentioned earlier, of institutions and um, a body of content that is AAAF enabled, but how do we then help users um, find and make use of those AAAF materials if they aren't already aware of them? Uh, and that's really kind of the animating question for a lot of this work. So we have something called the Technical Specification Group, a TSG. Uh, and there's a discovery TSG working on exactly this question and working on specifications that can make um, solving these problems a little bit easier. So they're looking at things like crawling and harvesting and import to viewers. Um, change notifications is coming down the road a bit. So crawling and harvesting is, is actually pretty straightforward. It's a relatively simple specification, but just uh, a standardized way of uh, making uh, changes and updates and new, new publications of manifests, um, a standardized way of making uh, those, those mechanisms available to something like an aggregator who might be presenting um, materials around a particular domain or a particular region uh, or a set of institutions. So this is in a pretty stable place at 0 0.9 and uh, just seeking some last comments and implementations before 1.0 um, has its final push. And we've already seen implementations from the Bodleian and from OCLC doing some interesting work aggregating all the content DM platforms, for example. Um, and I will also mention that AAAF, uh, the AAAF consortium itself will be hosting a centralized um, registry of the different activity streams that we're aware of. And then the other component of this, uh, the other work happening in the TSG is this idea of being able to port um, the viewing state. So we call it the content state API. And this is really uh, on two fronts um, uh, where it's working. And it's currently at an early version at 0 0.2. Um, but what this is working toward is on one hand, the, consist the ability to consistently index um, not just the digital object itself, but actually being able to to dig deeply and, and be able to um, deep link into the content state. So a particular annotation or region or, or subset um, within a complex digital object. Uh, and then related to that, the uh, ability to be able to uh, port that view and that um, interaction across different viewers and across different workspaces. So I think to illustrate this, um, there's a couple good links here. Um, and thanks to Richard Higgins from Durham University for these examples. So the common interaction, um, the, the most specific thing we can do is link to uh, something like a, an aggregate digital object. Uh, so this one is um, from Durham University is uh, just images of a, of a mountain climbing expedition. But Richard calls this exercise kind of find the mountain climber. Um, and when given that link, uh, it's a relatively difficult task and uh, you know, you'd have to use some other descriptive material to do it. But using the content state specification that we have in draft, um, he's able to actually embed in the link itself um, a much more precise and specific way of describing what we're getting at. So this links directly to uh, that component and describing this, uh, this gentleman here on the Everest Glacier in 1924. And you can see, zooming out a bit that that um, reveals the same element of the, the overall complex digital object, but the utility uh, of being able to link directly to um, that more specific component. You can see that becoming really valuable in something like um, a set of search results, for example. Um, and so the last piece I'll mention here in conjunction with uh, that technical discovery, uh, technical specification group, we also have uh, a community group that we call Discovery for Humans. Uh, and this group is really focused on the um, user experience of how people are finding um, materials and how they're making use of them and, uh, and, and looking at that across different domains and genres and institutions. And so the current work that they're doing um, 
there's an example there uh, over there on the right is just compiling some of the, the most common interaction patterns and looking at how different institutions make those things available. Um, and then all of that is moving toward a, a larger examination of common interaction patterns um, and ways that institutions are making these materials discoverable in a large, uh, large scale, a large sense. And then uh, with an eye toward um, publishing best practices and some guidelines for how those things might be done uh, more consistently across the industry and across different um, institutions. So I'm gonna leave it there. Um, of course, with this recorded format, uh, it's a little bit difficult for me to take questions, but uh, I am very happy to answer questions, very happy to put you in touch with people um, doing this work or uh, happy to provide examples um, that may be useful to your particular institution or your particular use case. So um, please, by all means, get in touch. My email address is there um, and we have other ways of getting in touch, getting in touch with the AAAF community. Um, and I appreciate, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much.